champion at 154 pounds. Zakar, the IBF champ at 154. Those are on the line as well as the vacant WBA fight and the Ring Magazine title as well. Shields, Zakar, Superwoman from Flint. Let's get inside the ring with Ray Flores. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Dort Financial Center here. Ray Flores. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Dort Financial Center here in Flint, Michigan, it is now time for our main event of the evening. 10 rounds for the unified WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Salida Promotions in association with Group Yvonne Michelle, sponsored by Bet Online, the Dort Financial Center, and Veggie. Your three judges scoring this world championship affair at ringside will be Mauro Di Fiore, Perlo Rodriguez, and Robin Taylor. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds is Mike Griffin. Introducing first, fighting to my left out of the red corner, she comes in wearing the white trunks with the gold. Her official weight, 152.6 pounds. As a professional, she is perfect. 17 bouts, 17 victories. Joining us from St. Ustashi, Quebec, Canada. She is the reigning and defending IBF Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, Madame et Monsieur, please welcome Marielle de Kerr. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. She comes in adorned in the purple and gold, weighing in officially at 153.6 pounds. As a professional, she too is undefeated. 10 wins, two of those coming by way of knockout. This two-time Olympic gold medalist joins us and represents Flint, Michigan. She is the former super middleweight, former undisputed middleweight champion of the world. And she is the reigning and defending WBC and WBO super welterweight champion of the world. Tonight, she looks to make history by becoming the first fighter to become an undisputed champion in two divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Clarissa T-Rex Shields. Your referee in charge here to give instructions is Mike Griffin. Okay, ladies, I give you my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves now, your box at the bell. God bless you both. The last time a women's fight has headlined a pay-per-view boxing event was 2001. Layla Ali, Jackie Frazier lied. It's rained a couple of times. Clarissa Shields, Maria Decare, picking up the legacy here in Flint for all the hardware at 154 pounds. In a historical moment where a young lady has decided to take her destiny in her own hands. It's Shields to care. Let's do it from Flint. The main event here on pay-per-view. Clarissa Shields in the purple and gold trunks. To care in the white and gold. And this is just the second southpaw that Clarissa Shields has faced in her career. The first since Sydney LeBlanc in her third pro fight. And a big oh. looping overhand right from Shields to start off the action in round one. One of the things that Mariev said was how loose she was walking into this fight because she has absolutely nothing to lose. She's had belts, she's had world championships. At this point in time, she understands the risk 
and compared to what she's gonna get, recognition, respect. It's a win-win situation for her. Big snap counter from Shields, who said that last performance against Ivana Habuzin was the sharpest she felt in her career, and she rattles the care just a bit with two hands as she stumbles back on her heels. Everything from the edge of the ropes to the middle of the ring now here. And to care, taking a lot of pride on her movement inside the ring. And she eats a right hand from Shields. There's a certain poise and calm in, in Clarissa. She's not letting the nervousness that DeCare is showing in the ring to get to her. She's in the middle of the ring just, just waiting. A big wide right hand, and we have heard Clarissa Shields say, hey, I want to I want to pull an Ann Wolf here on this yes. event in the first round. She's usually in the habit of the first round, you know, get, the get to know you round for yeah. Clarissa Shields for sure. But she came out as a very strong aggressor in that opening two minutes. It's a calm aggression. As you can see, she was not really looking for the care until she actually had her within her range. So she's being very, she's conserving energy. She's not just throwing punches. She understands that this is, this could be a long haul. Mary up to care, 34 years of age, and she picked up a unanimous decision victory in November of 2019 against Oglady Suarez. Ranked welterweight out of Venezuela, lost just one round across the judges' scorecards in that matchup. But right before then, June of 2019, outboxed a then 42-year-old Maria Lindbergh of Sweden. Again, massive step up in competition for Mariev de Kerr, despite a 17-0 perfect ledger in her pro career. As round two begins here in Superwoman, and unloading the fists is Shields. You can see the razor focus on Teresa Shields' face. She, she's, she has that jab right in front of her. You see it's a very short jab. Just short enough and fast enough. DeCare trying to find an opening without getting smacked on a counter here. What do you think of the jumpiness and how she's moving around? It can be a combination of nervousness and the fact that she just wants to stay nimble on her toes. Remember, at this point in time, because she is a southpaw, there's a danger that Clarissa could step on her foot and then avoid her mobility. And it's exactly what just happened, happened to Minicus. Yeah. And that comes from martial arts as well. Always on your toes. And Mariev Dekar, a decorated black belt in karate, started karate at age six. Came a black belt at 11, a fifth degree black belt here. And she realized karate was not an Olympic sport. So it was either Taekwondo or boxing. She said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give boxing a try. Yeah, see what this, see see what this see, is all about. <laughs> Let, let's see where this takes me. It's taking her to this unification fight against the self-reclaimed quote. Look at Clarissa's footwork. Justin, perfect. That left leg is always on the outside Perfectly of... Perfectly placed yes. against the southpaw. Always on the outside of Marie, Marie's uh, guard. Mary have coming inside there and she's met by a counter from Shields and another smothering left hand from Clarissa Shields. Right on the spot. She's on point looking for that jab. 
And the care tries to take that left leg in order to use that jab. It just doesn't, it's not opening her space. For only having one pro fight against the Southpaw, coming a few years ago at that, her third pro fight against Sydney LeBlanc, just the intuitiveness of keeping that lead leg on the outside. Yeah, you train it, and of course her, you know, her trainer, John David Johnson, a Southpaw, she's, yeah. <laughs> he's the toughest Southpaw she, he's, that she's ever faced, yeah. but she has that instinct to, to just know where to place it despite such limited experience against Southpaws inside the ring. Flying hours, Justin, that's flying hours. That means she's exercised, she's used it, she's actually sparred on it. And you can see the result. Third round action beginning here in Flint. The rest of Shields is hometown. 375 fans in attendance in limited capacity here at the Dort Federal Union Financial Center. And here comes she Clarissa Shields teeing off onto care, backing her up. Wide rights from Shields. Shields looking for a home run. Trying to make an impression in her hometown and on pay-per-view. Mariev to care. And Shields' his eyes throwing an elbow there. Michael Griffin warning to care. She gets met there by a vicious right cross from Shields. That's her boxing acumen. You give her space, she's going to capitalize it. And that's exactly what she's doing right now. And DeCare didn't make the same mistake twice. Shields scraping here again with that right hand. They may have butted heads briefly. They work back to the middle of the ring here. In this 154-pound unification bout. I have a couple of numbers for you. 1,431 punches against 512. That's exactly how Clarissa Shields outpunches her opponents. That's all I'm saying. I'm just gonna, you know, Mamba out. <laughs> and that's what we're watching right now. Crisp right cross again. She pops to care at the end of round three. looking for in Clarissa tonight was the leader mentality resulting and reflecting that ring with ring red Being made, was it being made? Nope, now it's off again. All uh -huh. throughout the pandemic, all throughout 2020. We just forced her to expedite a transition into MMA, something that he, she has on her docket for later this year. Yeah. She wants to fight an MMA battle in June for the first time, switch back to boxing in September, and then have another MMA event in December. Why not? If, if the opportunities are not presenting themselves here in the ring, why not go into the cage? I mean, Holly Holm did a great job. Ronda Rousey gave her the opportunity, and guess what? It came up tenfold for her in games. Shields says, you know, I've, I've accomplished everything I can in boxing. In ten fights? Yes. She is one of three women that have had championships at 168, 160, and 154. She says, why, hey, why not make it interesting? I want to simultaneously hold world titles in boxing and in MMA. Why not? Serranos do. DeCare trying to find an angle inside. But Shields, I'm gonna, you know a what? lot of gamesmanship right now. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to what uh, Dan was saying. Happiest fighter ever. She's still smiling. Yep. Oh, the she Right got hand rocked. caught downstairs. Yes, but her footwork is flawless. That is key. Legs have to be underneath, and they have to be nice and tight. 
and that is still there. Yes, she got caught, but she recovered. Outside from that instance in round three, DeCare hasn't waited too much as far as in the deep, muddy water. She's been able to high step her way out of damaging situations for the most part. Yeah, because she realized that if she gives Clarissa any time, she'll pay. Oh. And there we have a little showmanship from DeCare. We have not seen that at all this entire week, the entire lead up to the fight. She but it's triggered in round four. Yes, yes, but she did say that. Do not take my happiness for weakness. Once I walk into the ring, it's a completely different ball game. See, she keeps that stick up front. Clarissa is just waiting, waiting for her and baits her in to come in with those hooks. That left hook is coming with all kinds of bad intentions. And I'm waiting for that left hook to connect and see how Mariev is gonna take it. Shields landed a fight high 13 punches in round number three, according to CompuBox. In round number four, more of a chess match between the two as far as punches landing, but some juice. Heading into round five for sure. The hands on the Care's defense has changed from the regular stance to a cat stance. It's. Pause up. Yes. Call it cat, uh, cat stance. Close to a headbutt there, nothing happening. As Clarissa Shields tries to navigate through her second Southpaw opponent in her pro career. Dangerous footing there from DeCare, and she's able to get out of it. Yeah, but great footing from Clarissa. Shortening the distance from the outside just to bring in those short punches. Both fighters here in round five waiting for a mistake from their opponent. Do you like those overhand rights from Clarissa Shields? Yes, and they come with really, really bad intentions, and I'm just waiting for that left one to land. And I want to, I want to see how the care handles that because that's why she's shortening the distance with her right leg in the outside just to set up for that left. Ten seconds to go and another beautiful crisp shot predicated off that footwork. Yes. Ooh, things are heating up. And this is my point. We talked about this in fighter meetings. Emotional maturity. She has to exercise that. We saw that a couple of times, how she loses focus, how she gets the best of her comes out when she's calm, when she can actually, you know, just stick to her fight plan. She's just waiting for the care to walk in. She wants that fight in short distance. She can create a lot of damage. See Clarissa's trainer, John David Johnson, in her corner. As we get ready to go for round number six here in Flint. An all-women's pay-per-view leading to this main event. Clarissa Shields, Marie of DeCare, for a chance to unify at 154 pounds. And for Clarissa Shields to be undisputed for a second time as they can look at some of the CompuBox stats here in round number six. 
Decair landing just 17 total punches in the fight. And, and now her jab does not exist. Once she changed that defense stance to pause up, that's very difficult to throw a jab that's gonna set up anything. And now Clarissa is literally walking her down. A big shot from the left hand by Shields. And that, I'm waiting for that one. I'm calling it right now. See how she walks inside? And she's just gonna use that left like it's gonna go out of style. A minute to go here in round six. This is the first long stretch where you could potentially sense that DeCare could be in trouble here. Stefan Arnois is looking at his pupil closely. Big combo from Shields, trying to find the opening. Ooh. She rocks the jaw with that right hand, comes in with another uppercut for good measure. Again, DeCare just landing 12.2% of her punches. This is DeCare's first match against an undefeated opponent. Underdog for the first time in her career. She relished the opportunity, but Clarissa Shields adding the mustard through six rounds with some effective punching against the Canadian. I like the composure. The footwork is flawless. There was a little bit of a step in right there. But that right, you said it, it's going so quick. I don't think the care can actually see it. That's three punches in a row. Biggest takeaway so far is that Clarissa Shields has elevated that razor sharpness to her punches. I agree. And that comes with the focus, the maturity, and obviously, you were to think that it's only on the 10 fights that she's had as a pro, but let's add the amateur acumen that she brings into the ring as a pro. It's got a round number seven, scheduled to go for 10 in a super welterweight unification between Clarissa Shields and Maria of Decare. That bouncing, I thought by now she would settle down. With a fighter like Carissa, you need to settle down. Shields belting her with that right hand again. Trying to avoid the smother. That's one of the things that I really enjoyed about Marlene Esparza. She brought the tempo down and then she brought it up. The, she intensified the, the, the bout when she needed to. And the care hasn't been able to slow Clarissa down. She hasn't been able to even adjust her distance. You, you, you mentioned that you, you were surprised that the jumpy footwork is still here yes. in round seven you thought maybe if you got tagged a couple of times you would have settled down yes. at this point but it is still preve pre prevalent with Mary of Decare here in round number seven but by now I think it's being counterproductive because she hasn't been able to sit into any of her punches because she's constantly bouncing so even if Clarissa is actually shortening the distance and she did find the distance she's too jumpy she's still bouncing Closing seconds of round seven. So there's times when you need to be dancing around. But once you go into the distance, you need to be able to settle down and be able to connect. You can't connect and bounce at the same time. But the game plan has to change starting right now. Oh, it should have started a started couple of rounds yes. ago. 
she, she's already playing catch up. And by now, mathematically speaking, it'll be my too deep of a hole for yes. her to climb out of, for sure. But it'll be a good barometer for the rest of the way. And if this continues, you could walk out of here saying, hey, Mar Mary of the Care, maybe not giving herself a chance on this night. No. But, but I, I want to think that there's a sense of urgency, there's a sense of nervousness, there's a lot at play for Clarissa, and she mentioned it, that she was just enjoying this opportunity. She's a happy fighter, even though she just munched right. a nice jab right there. Theresa Shields has said in the past, you know, some of the things like she would want to try and improve upon, again, just 25 years of old, not rush as much, mm -hmm. not rush as much, and we've seen her at times getting excited, but she's not losing control in any sense of the word. There's, there, we can see a difference between the shields that faced Hammer and the shields that faced Habazin and the shields we see today. Which is impressive because I feel like each time you've seen Clarissa Shields now, since getting knocked down by Hannah Gabriels, she has brought it to another level with each battle. She's continued that even with the 14 month layoff. Yes. And, and that's a shout out to the type of dedication and commitment that she has because she never stopped working out. Under a minute to go in round eight. But the tempo, her pace just slowed down for this round. I mean, she really doesn't need to expose herself now. Shields turning the dial back just a bit before unloading on a three-punch combo. When she's in range, for sure a flurry's coming in. There she is. Uh -huh. That right. I'm waiting for that left to land. Just a lot of viciousness with that right hand. Yes. This is a really good fight. People are enjoying it. They're really soaking up this opportunity of two very good prize fighters. Big prize on the line, the chance to be called undisputed at the end of this one. The pace dictated throughout the last eight rounds here from Clarissa Shields. So when Clarissa just walks enough into that range, she throws so many punches and Mariev can only just sit and eat them and maybe counter punch with one. When no, there's no effective aggression. No, eight rounds in the books on your scorecard that we do value here. I mean, it's on beautiful stationery here, Claudia. <laughs> Are we have? Do we have a round for Decare at all? No. Round number nine underway. And, and unfortunately, at this point in time, you know, the, the system doesn't allow to express what really happens in the ring. I got to give credit to all those things that the care brings to the table, which is always engaging, always she's game. She's willing to just walk into Clarissa's space. But she's just not effective enough. And I, and I start with the footwork. Another big right cross from Clarissa Shields. You see DeCare venturing into that, that space that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and she's bounced immediately out. So you're supposed to be in light enough that you can walk in and walk out, but not so light that you cannot just pivot in order to plant and sit in your punch. I mean, it's so easy to be said, you know. We can talk about it till we're blue in the face. Go do it. Especially when it's Clarissa's punishment coming at you. 
Good movement, good punch placement from Shields again. Make it an impact. Stefan Arnois is asking the care to go for go for the hooks, look for the body. You gotta get in range first. Shields turn it up the dial in these last few seconds of yes. round nine. She she sold this round, definitely. Started slow and then tighten it up, closing those last 10 seconds. Yeah, you might have thought, you know, to care, put forward, her, you know, her, maybe her maybe her best round. I agree. But I still think it was dictated by Shields' pace. I agree that with that too. And we can see it now in the replay. See, she's baiting her in, baiting her in, and then it's Clarissa, the one that starts the action. I didn't see the elbow. Did you see the elbow? I did, yes. But this is the second time happening in the same corner. Well, she was called on it. And then, of course, the instructions from the corner are very solid for the care. This is it. Well, we know what happens next year in round Ladies 10. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've this seen in round is nine. the 10th and turn up the final volume a little bit. Oh, yeah. To try and close this out here. Final round of this 154 title match. This has been a, a cool atmosphere. Obviously yes. limited capacity. This place is able to hold close to 4,500. It would have been a lot more than that. It would have been well over 6,000 with the floor seating here. But again, yeah. COVID protocols, state of Michigan, allowing 375 people inside here tonight. As they watch Flint, Michigan's most decorated athlete in history, and there's a lot to choose from. Yes. Not just in boxing, where you have Anthony and Andre Durrell. Plenty of other multi-sport stars coming through as well. Mark Ingram, Mateen Cleaves, Michigan State basketball great, JaVale McGee. But here, Flint, Michigan, it is Claresha Shields' hometown. And after 10 rounds of going all out, None of them have said or even given a glimpse of any type of exhaustion, tired, dehydration. Zero. Zero. 50 seconds to go in this title fight here on pay-per-view. Clarissa Shields, Mary of DeCare. Left hook from Shields, which was so prominent wow. in that fight against Ivana Habazin, not as much here, doing more work with that right cross, but here, connecting on some combos in round 10 against Mariev Decare. We can definitely see a much more refined technique on Clarissa, and we gotta give credit to Coach Cooper because that was the intention for the last year. Can we coin it bait and wait? Yes. Bait and wait, does that work? Yeah. Okay. And her patience today, sitting and capitalizing. Winding down, last few seconds, and those two go the distance here in this welterweight fight. And that is beautiful to see at the end of this title fight and at the end of an unprecedented night for women's boxing. The Clarissa Shields running away with this 10-rounder. And, and in a, in a perfectly fought fight. I mean, technique was there, fight plan, she adhered to everything emotionally, mentally, she was focused. You'd be floored if it wasn't a clean sweep on the scorecards. Uh, yeah. yeah. Would you? I would be floored, yes, but. It, and the sad part is that doesn't really reflect on the care's effort and talent. That's right. It's because great. If you watch this, you know, one, one, you know that she wasn't fighting her fight. You could tell. I think, you, you know, you, you're intimidated by going in there with Clarissa Shields, obviously to an extent. It's just a little disappointing that it lasted for maybe seven rounds of change. You would have liked to see that come about. But all the same, you saw 
it wasn't easy for Clarissa at the same time. No. She wanted a knockout. I mean, she wanted an impressive showing. It was impressive, but for all the talk that she put together as far as going for the knockout, she, she really hadn't been talking like that in her prior fights. This meant something, heard, yes. but it's not obviously not a disappointment. Well, DeCaro did not sell this cheap. No. And again, when you're going on a 10-9 system, it doesn't really reflect how much effort DeCaro actually made Clarissa put in every single round. I would have liked that ninth round to be repeated from the very beginning of the fight. But of course, it didn't happen. She had to settle in. I'm still, I would still like to see that footwork being a little bit more solid and more stable. Well, all that is waiting for history to become official is our man, Ray Flores. Let's go inside the ring, get the finals from Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judges Perla Rodriguez, Mauro Di Fiore, and Robin Taylor score the bot identical. 100 to 90 for your winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, and now the undisputed super welterweight champion of the world from Flint, Michigan, Clarissa T. Rex Shields. So 100 to 93 across the board, Clarissa Shields has become the first boxer, man or woman, to unify the four major titles in two different weight classes. Historical. This is a history moment. So soak it up. I'm soaking it up. They are belting up Clarissa Shields inside the ring here after the victory. Over Mariev to care that'll improve her record in boxing to 11 and 0. Again, signed a three year deal with the Professional Fight League in December. She's expected to make her MMA debut later on this spring. June? It'll be right Wait, it, back to work. Spring or summer? Late, late spring, early, early summer. I mean, yeah, June, May, Whenever. June. Yeah, I yeah mean, it worked for hey, Holly Holm. We're all on her time. Yeah, true. <laughs> And that's what she wants. Clarissa she wants time. She wants two MMA fights, one more boxing fight.